University of Waterloo, one of the most prestigious program in all of Canada for engineering. If you're an aspiring engineer, this is known as the place to be to complete your degree. I'm going to my third year of computer engineering, but I want to share my unfiltered opinion of the engineering program and the university experience here. I'm going to break it all down for you, the good and the bad, to help you get a better idea of what the program is like. I'm going to cover it all from culture to classes to balancing health and of course, co-op. Now, we've all seen the memes and we all want to know, are you really going to end up like that? Living like a zombie locked up in your room with no social life whatsoever? This is my walk card from last year and I think I'm doing all right, you know? I don't look too bad. But make sure to watch to the end because I'm going to cover three tips that I think are going to help you a lot if you're studying engineering at Waterloo. And if you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And without further ado, let's go. I'm just going to get this out of the way. While I don't think Waterloo is a perfect university by any means, hell, I don't think any university is, I still think it's one of the best, if not the best one in all of Ontario for STEM and engineering programs. And no, you're not going to become a zombie, you can still have a great social life, but in all honesty, the quality of education that you're going to receive here is pretty much going to be the exact same you're going to receive at any other university. All these schools have pretty much preset curriculums that they don't deviate from very much. What really makes Waterloo stand out though is the name and recognizability. It's basically known as the MIT of the North. Now, if you told me someone that went to MIT, you pretty much automatically know that they're super smart. That's kind of the general benefit you get from going to Waterloo. The education stuff is pretty much going to be the same, but it's the stuff surrounding it, like the opportunity, the culture, the people, that's going to really make it stand out. I think the culture here at Waterloo is actually pretty good, contrary to what others might think. You know, everyone who comes here is super smart and bright, and that naturally creates a high pressure culture, which is super competitive and stressful. But at the end of the day, I think it's that pressure and culture that drives you to be the best version of yourself. You know, coming into university, I had no clue what I was doing. No actual knowledge of the real world and how industries worked and even a tad bit of ego. But coming here made me realize how much smarter people are and how much room I still have to improve. The stuff you learn in class may or may not actually apply to the job that you're doing. But I still think at some point, it'll come back and help you, even if it's in a super small way. Like I said, most of your practical experience is going to come from your co-ops, which I'll talk about later in the video. Course load. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. All right. You're busy. Courses are busy. Your day is going to be full, especially in your first two years when you're mainly going to be focusing on your intro courses and your days are going to be packed with either labs, tutorials or lectures. You can basically think of it as like a full time job and your schedule is going to be pretty much set in stone for the first two years. So there's no electives. No course selection needs to be done, which can be a pro or a con depending how you think. And it's really only in third year that you're actually going to start getting electives. But on that same front, there is quite a bit of an adjustment period when you come in. You're immediately thrown in week one with lab schedules, lectures, due dates, assignments, midterms, exams, all given to you within the first week. And it can get pretty overwhelming. That initial first month adjustment period is going to take some time and might be the hardest part of your degree. But it's not all doom and gloom, all right? Realistically, not all of your classes are mandatory. And a lot of them, especially as you go on your degree later and later, they're really not worth going to. I think this is the biggest thing that I've learned as I've progressed throughout my degree. Sure, your schedule may look daunting at first, but if you really look at it, after a week or so, you can pretty much gaze whether a class is worth going to or not and whether you're better off just learning the material on your own. Especially nowadays, there's so many ways you can just learn material on your own, whether that's online through YouTube, ChatGPT, just the lecture videos being posted online. There's so many ways to just learn the material outside of class that lectures sometimes feel redundant and you really don't need to go half the time. Low key, just by not going to class, you save up so much of your time and it allows you to work more on your schedule. I will say, the program definitely gets easier as you go along. The first couple years are probably going to be the hardest parts of your degree and your course load towards the end is pretty light. So if you can just push through those first couple years, there is definitely a light at the end of the tunnel. The program is hard. It's going to be challenging. You're going to need mental toughness to get through it. You're going to feel the stress and pressure of the program at times. Spe You're going to feel the stress 
and pressure of the program at times, especially during exams, when you've got five exams in a week to study for, yeah, it's gonna get to you. One thing that's never gonna go away is imposter syndrome. That is a continuous battle you're always gonna have to deal with. No matter how much you succeed or progress, no matter what you accomplish, that feeling really never goes away. I get hit with it all the time and there really isn't any easy way to deal with it. You'll see people getting better grades, better jobs, and it feels shit. You just gotta realize that everyone's path is different. Your, no one's journey is gonna be the exact same. Your time is gonna come and you will succeed if you just keep going at it. My advice, really, if you're overwhelmed and anxious, go to the gym, get active, join a club, find other people, talk to other people. I think those are some of the best ways to clear your mind and it's really gonna help you get back in the groove. Co-op, one of the most important parts of your Waterloo experience. One of the main reasons you probably chose this university in the first place. In this market, getting a job is no easy feat. Co-op search is going to take up pretty much the same, if not more time than your actual schoolwork on a weekly basis. The co-op program is great, but the system and application process, I have some mixed feelings on that. Let me explain. Waterloo has their own job board called Waterloo Works, where employers come and post jobs and students can mass apply all directly on one site. Sounds great, right? Throughout your study term, there are three different co-op cycles where you can apply to about 50 jobs per week. So having them all in one place makes it pretty easy to just crank out a bunch of applications. The thing is, if you're not really in tech, Waterloo Works doesn't really have that many jobs. I've got friends in civil and nano engineering who rarely even use Waterloo Works because there's not that many jobs for them on the system. And part of your school fees go to maintaining the Waterloo Works platform. And that's a fee you can't back out of. So you're paying all this money for a system that you can barely even use. And then we get to the platform itself. Waterloo Works is kind of ass. The whole co-op process is kind of convoluted and the site is really not that user friendly. The main problem is in the actual hiring cycles. Like I mentioned, there's three co-op cycles and each of them are two weeks long where you can send about 50 applications per week. The biggest problem is in the ranking system. So if you're unfamiliar with how Waterloo Works works, no pun intended. Once you complete an interview, the employer will rank you based on how good they thought you were. So when you get to see all the employer's rankings, you get about a 24 hour period to submit your rankings back for what you rank the jobs that you interviewed for. So you get your job based on a match system with your employer's ranking and your ranking that are added up. And out of all of the jobs that you interviewed for, the one with the lowest total score is the one you get. So best case scenario is employer ranks you one and you rank them one. So that adds up to two, which is the lowest possible score. That means you've pretty much guaranteed the job. So if you see any rank ones, you know that you can secure that job just by ranking them one as well. But the problem comes in if they weren't ranked one. If you're not ranked one, you could be ranked two to 10 to however many candidates they interviewed. You only see the word ranked. Now, what does that mean? You could have been the second best candidate, the fifth best, the worst, you have no idea. And you can't reach out to them asking because it's against the terms and conditions. So now what? You gotta rank your employers back now and you don't know which one ranked you higher because if one company ranked you second but the other company ranked you 10th, you put that company as your first choice and you put the other guys as your third choice, someone else could have a better ranking among them and their total score might add up to a lower number than your total score which would mean they'll get the job. And so basically this turns the whole system into gambling. I can't figure out for the life of me why they don't just let you see your rank. It would help with decisions so much and it wouldn't create this toxic, will they, won't they gambling environment. And the thing is, if you don't get match, if you don't get the best match for that employer among all your rankings, you might not even get a job. You could have been ranked anywhere and you might still might not get a job also. There's no protection for students. Well, now what do I mean by this? Once you get a job, what happens is you're matched with the employer and you're locked in with them. Meaning you no longer have access to the job board on Waterloo Works because you secured that job. But the employer can revoke your job offer at any time. And there's nothing you can do about it.
So that's my review of Waterloo Engineering as a third year. Now, as promised, here are my three main tips that I pretty much mentioned throughout the video, but I'm gonna reiterate them. The three biggest tips I have for students studying engineering here. Number one, don't waste your time with classes. Most of them really aren't that important and skip the ones that you can. Don't make your life harder for yourself. Number two, find the right group of people. Yes, Waterloo can be depressing at times. The university isn't the biggest party house like other universities are. Laurier is 10 minutes away if you want to party, but with the right group of people, you can turn any situation into a good one. Find your friends, find the people you enjoy hanging out with. With the right group of people, any university experience, no matter how dull it may seem on the outside, can be enjoyable. And number three, the most important one of all, focus on co-op. Your co-ops are so much more important than your classes are, and this is the best time to make the most out of them. Go into each one with all your effort because these experiences can change your life. But there you have it, my unfiltered review of Waterloo Engineering as a third year student. Like I mentioned, I still think Waterloo is the best university for engineering, even with its flaws, however major some of them may be. But at the end of the day, you're gonna come out of it much smarter, much better, much more qualified, ready for the industry and ready to excel in whatever field you go. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate it. Drop in a like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you think and what your experience, if you're from Waterloo, has been. If you got any advice as well, let me know down below. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Take care.